Hello guys, I'm Nawal Yamul. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this video, we are going to see what is a Madeleine architecture. Uh, let us understand what is Madeleine architecture here. So a Madeleine architecture is a data design pattern used to logically organize the data in the lake house. So what we are doing here, like let us imagine that you are getting a data from a batch as well as a stream. So however your raw data is, so it, it, it is, it may be in any format. It may be a batch. It may be a streaming. It may be a JSON format, CSV format. It might be your HTML, any, any format, like however your data is, we just put that data into your raw layer or it is called as a bronze layer. So we just ingest all that batch data into the bronze layer. So you can see this image here or maybe I'll show you the second image. Yeah, I'll show you this. So you can see your data is coming from anywhere. Maybe let us imagine that your data is coming from your data lake. It might be your ADLS in a Azure world or if it is S3 bucket from your AWS. So your data is coming from your uh, source and we just put all that data as it is in the bronze layer. So bronze layer, it is the raw data. We call it as a raw data. From bronze, we then move to the silver layer or also called as a refined view of the data so your raw data is if it is nested json if it is json or if it is csv anything so without looking at the data types without looking at the column names without looking at the nested json we just put it in your bronze layer from bronze we just refine it we enrich that data for example we create a correct data types for the table or that data frame or we create a good column names or if it is more and more nested JSON we just uh, create a good uh, data or a structure data out of it. So that becomes your silver layer. From this silver we refine the data more and we create some aggregations on top of it. So we create an aggregated data and then we call it as a gold layer. So this gold layer can be used further for your analysis purpose or this gold layer is then consumed by your BI people, your data analyst people or maybe your machine learning people also. So where they build a model on top of this gold layer. So taking your data from bronze to silver, silver to gold is all about the multi hop architecture or in Databricks it is also called as a Medallion architecture. So what uh, what they used to do, data people used to do before this Databricks is they used to keep it in your ADLS, then they ref they used to reform it and then they used to put this data again might be in the ADLS or might be they used to store it into the data warehouse and from that data warehouse they used to consume it by the BI people. But now when they have introduced this lake house, so what is this lake house? Lake house is a combination of both the data warehouse and data lake. So it acts as both data lake as well as data warehouse. So what they want us to keep this all layers into only one platform that is a lake house. So when you are creating a different layers, you can create a different databases for that. And behind this scene, like wherever you are creating a bronze, silver and gold, Behind the scene, if you are using Azure Databricks, they will be using your Azure Data Lake storage only. Okay, now let me explain you the Databricks. Now it's not just a Databricks, it's a Databricks Lakehouse platform. So you can see here, the name itself is the Databricks Lakehouse platform. Now what is Lakehouse? In a simple, simple term, let me explain you, Lakehouse is a combination of both. So it is a combination of your data warehouse and your data lake. So I'll just explain again. Before this lake house, they used to have data warehouse separate, data lake separate. Data warehouse was only used to store a structured data. So if you have a table that is in the form of rows and columns, we used to store it into the data warehouse. And from this data warehouse, your data will consumed by BI people or for creating a dashboard and report and all those things. So moving a data from your data lake 
then doing a transformation and then storing into the data warehouse is called or was called as a complete etl but now we are not taking a warehouse and data lake as a separate entities we have merged both like we mean the databricks people say that we have merged both you can use this lake house as a data warehouse also and as a data lake also now you can ask me like okay data warehouse means it is a, a structured data which has a table in it and what about data lake data lake is can be of any format your raw data you can have a image there you can have a video there you can have a json file html file csv file anything on there then what about the lake house so when you are converting your raw data to a structured one a meaningful data in the lake house we are using a multi op architecture just now we have discussed so we are getting from bronze to silver silver to gold when we write it into the lake house uh, databricks recommends us not database actually everyone all the organization recommends us to write it into the delta format now what is delta format so we need to know about the delta now so delta lake is one format that sits on top of parquet only so if you just go internals of the delta lake i have a separate video on youtube uh, maybe i'll share you the link on that you can just check what is delta lake and internals of the delta lake so it is a parquet format only basically it is a parquet format now what is parquet format so to explain you in a basic term parquet format compresses your data of any for like if you have a csv json any other format it will compress it in a large volume for example 60 to 70% of your data is compressed in the parquet format because then again if you go back and see why uh, the parquet has that compression feature in it because it stores the data in the columnar format now what is columnar format if you take a raw data in a csv for example uh, it uses a row based data like it saves the data in a row wise but when you talk about the parquet file it uses a columnar based so it stores the data in a column wise so that's the reason why it is compressed so few statistics uh, there are few statistics which shows you that actually databricks claims that if you have a csv file if you have a csv file of 1 gb and you are using a databricks to transform it and converting it to the parquet file parquet file uh, databricks claims that you can convert it from 1 gb to 17 mb that is almost 97% reduction so obviously i have tried with from other data sets 97% is not at all possible what is uh, according to my point of view but absolutely 60 to 70% or you can call it some way around 75% also it will be reduced so 1 gb of your data can be converted to only 300 to 200 mb so just imagine uh, if you are dealing with a real time data where uh, every day you are getting 1 tb of data in the csv format converting that to a parquet and storing it in only few mbs can save you a lot of cost so that is about the good feature of parquet that will compress the data now there was a parquet file parquet extension that was absolutely perfect but there was few limitations on this parquet side also and they have built this delta delta lake so delta lake is app, like basically parquet format only but with this parquet format they have some transaction locks they have some transaction locks in that so uh, when we have that transaction locks which are made up of json uh, this transaction locks are basically of json and crc file so then we call it as a delta lake so if you just go back and see who has uh, developed this delta lake it's all the original founders of the spark those who have developed the uh, spark then they later on developed the data bricks and then they later on developed this delta lake now delta lake is open it is absolutely an open source uh, but delta lake is a open source project of linux so if you remember i told you that spark is a open source now but 
the foundation of uh, spark is apache apache foundation but delta lake is now owned by the linux foundation so it is absolutely free absolutely open source anyone can use it so many companies many companies who are working on this uh, data platform they want us to get your data into the data lake or write it into the data lake now why because there are so many features of the delta lake so let me explain that so i have to go back to the delta lake again the website is delta.io not this delta.io let me open this yeah so building a lake house with a delta lake so you can see again they are talking about the same thing okay you ingest all your data into the bronze layer from bronze layer you convert it and you call it as a refined tables you call it as a silver table like you uh, remove the null values you remove the duplicates you uh, cast the data types you get a good column names and from that refined tables you aggregate the data so this aggregated data can be used further for analytics and machine learning now you might be thinking like okay i you are telling me to write it into the delta lake that delta lake will work as a lake house now where exactly is this lake house don't worry your lake house is sitting exactly on top of your existing data lake so what is data lake we have talked about data lake it might be your azure data lake it might be your amazon s3 bucket or it might be your google cloud storage oracle cloud anything whatever your storage is on top of that if you are writing it in the delta format then your existing data lake converts it to the delta for delta lake so this is about the delta lake now again you might ask like okay you are talking about delta lake already we have a parquet file and uh, parquet used to do a good thing actually it, it is reducing so much of my data then why you need to write it to the delta again so delta is by default it will store it into the parquet files only but there are some transaction logs that is happening behind this scene so what will happen to this transaction logs because of this transaction logs and there are so many features of this delta lake like it has a very good and a strong support for asset transaction which protects your data and you can go up to petabytes of the scale also so the scalable metadata and the most important feature of this delta lake is time travel so there were not any fee, any uh, software or any uh, extension or uh, you can call any format till now that used to go back and see that is time travel so if you ask me like uh, in a data warehouse thing or maybe in a data lake can i go back and see what were the uh, operations i have done before or what was my previous data so that was not at all possible before but with the help of this delta lake you can go back you can do the time travel and all those things and obviously it is an open source and till now like before delta lake there were nothing or no tool where you used to combine both batch and streaming but this delta lake gives us a feature to do both batch as well as streaming it unifies both and then obviously schema evolution so if you are having some bad records coming in or if you have getting some extra column with some extra data type or anything this can all be handled by using this delta log and audit history and you can all also perform the dml operations on directly the delta lake like you can use merge you can use update you can in do inserts all those things with the data lake directly so that was about the data lake and you can see so many companies have contributed to the data lake so these are few of the companies and you can see this so it is a project that is governed by the linux foundation okay let me uh, give you a short recap of what i have done so first i talked to you about the medallion architecture medallion architecture means uh, medallion architecture or a multi hop architecture means that you are getting your raw data and then you are converting it into the three layers that is bronze silver and then gold so for this we are storing all this into only one platform and that is your lake house platform so what is the lake house so i explained you about the lake house by using a databricks uh, i mean website where i explained you that lake house is nothing but it is a combination of both 
data warehouse and data lake that combines together and it is a lake house so when it comes to lake house which format you are using in this data lake house the format we are using it is a delta lake so what is delta lake delta lake the format basically uses parquet only but with that parquet there are some transaction logs which are getting created so now i have explained what is delta lake in detail on the website of delta.io where again it uses a medallion architecture or a multi op architecture it is called as a bronze layer silver layer and the gold layer and this gold table or gold layer is consumed by your bi or a dashboard people or maybe machine learning people and i have ex also explained that where exactly is this lake house so you don't need to go and check where is your lake house so lake house is nothing but it is sitting on top of your existing data lake only so in our case we are using an azure data bricks we are using an azure data lake so on top of that data lake only you have your delta lake so now why delta lake so these are the features what i have covered so if you still want to go deep into that i request you to watch my youtube video i'll show you uh, i have explained you in detail about all about the delta lake all about the uh, internals of the delta lake so let me show you here give me a second let me go to the playlist here and i have a playlist on databricks actually so if you scroll down oh, let me click on this i guess yeah so or what i'll do give me one second guys hey yeah yeah i know yeah so if i scroll down here uh, here i have explained you all the details about yeah so here i have explained you all about the delta lake data bricks and what is lake house and the internals of the delta lake so i request you to please watch this if you like want to know more about the delta okay so let me copy it here okay so we are using a multi hop architecture so from uh, the raw data it might be both it might be your uh, batch or a streaming and then we use a bronze layer to ingest all your data and from bronze we are moving to the refined one called a silver table and then moving to the gold table so this was all about the multi op architecture and the what is lake house and on top of lake house what is delta lake i hope you enjoyed this session guys thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my channel thank you for watching again keep learning